بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد سنن راتبة أو رواتب ذو سنن prayers that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regularly Alayhi Salatu Wasallam made aside from the Sunnah aside from his uh, the Maktubat the Maktubat meaning those prayers which are an obligation for us to pray like of course the five daily prayers Fajr and Dhuhr Wal Asr Wa Maghrib Wa Isha those are the five daily prayers but the uh, Ratiba Sunan Ratiba are those salats that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam made regularly as a mukammalat, as a way of perfecting the regular prayers. So the sunnah nawafu and the sunnah mu'akkida are extra prayers in order to assist us with filling in the gaps and the shortcomings in our regular prayer and may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings in our salat because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that in the salat that verily the salat tanhona an fahisha wal munkar that prayer should prohibit you from sinfulness, from wicked sins and evil deeds. So if you find yourself praying the five daily prayers, the five times daily prayers, and you're still doing a lot of major sins, then you should go back to your prayer and look at your prayer and see, is your prayer sahiha? Is your prayer in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? And one of the ways to help, aside from learning the proper way to pray and striving to pray and have khushu, humility, one of the ways to help complete our prayers or our shortcomings in our prayers and make up for them is by praying sunnans, by, by, by praying extra prayers. And these are the sunnas we're talking about. And the Prophet ﷺ had many sunnans that he regularly did and that's what makes them the sunnans for us to follow An Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal salaytu ma'a nabi ma'a rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rakatain qabla al-dhuhr wa rakatain ba'daha wa rakatain ba'da al-jumu'ah wa rakatain ba'da al-maghrib wa rakatain ba'da al-isha رواه بخاري ومسلم وفي لفظ فأما المغرب وعشاء والفجر والجمعة ففي بيته وفي لفظ البخاري أن ابن عمر قال حدثني حفصة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يسلي سجدتين خفيفتين بعدما يطلع الفجر وكانت ساعة لا أدخل على نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيها رواه بخاري. In these ahadith with their different alfaz, they make clear for us the sunnans and that we should strive to pray these extra prayers to make up for our shortcomings in our salat. So Ibn uh, Abdullah uh, Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنه, he said. I prayed with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam two units of prayer before Dhuhr and two after Dhuhr and two after Jumu'ah and two after Maghrib and two after Isha Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim and then in the narration in the, a narration in Bukhari or in, a, 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 in another narration, المغربو, as for Maghrib and Isha and Fajr and Jumu'ah, they were in his house, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And then in another narration, uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha said to me that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray two uh, units of prayer, two sajdatain, very khafif, very light, after the, the, uh, the sun would rise. And this was a time that no one would enter upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In these ahadith are many, many benefits. But from amongst the main benefits that the ulama mention is that it shows the regular sunans that we should make for our prayers. And they are as follows in accordance with this hadith in Bukhari that we should pray that uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to pray uh, two units uh, after or, or before dhuhr and two after dhuhr. And he would pray two after the Juma prayer. And he would pray two after Maghrib. And he would pray two after Salatul Isha. And then in another nation, uh, narration, uh, he said, As for Maghrib and Isha and Fajr and Jumwa, that we, uh, he prayed them in his house, sallallahu alayhi wa Letting us know that the pr- place of the sunans, the best place, is in your house. And this is in accordance with another narration of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, uh, Salat... Uh, Salat fi fi bayti afdal Salat fi bayti fi bayti afdal min Salat afdal min min adunya wa ma fiha illa maktuba. Or kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what, what means that prayer in the house is better than what is contained in the dunya or as it was mentioned in the hadith. I'm, I'm not sure, I can't recall the exact uh, level or statement of the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, but that it's, it's better to pray in the home except for the obligatory prayers. So that lets us know that the place of our sunnans strive to pray them at home. Unless you fear that you will be tired and you will not be able to accomplish them at your, at your home in the time, so then pray them at the masjid. For example, if you are in, um, you are, um, you know that you're, you're very tired and you want to get the sunnans of Salat al-Isha to pray it after the Isha prayer. If you, the, the best is to pray it at home. But if you are fearful that due to your, your tiredness that by the time you get to your home you will not be able to perform that prayer, then pray it in the masjid. Pray it while you have the ability to do so. So this shows us the the wisdom and that the Sharia uh, offers us many options to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to make things easy on us. And then in the other narration, the one on Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray two units, very light units of prayer, so very uh, giving them their, their rights, giving them the haq, but not, uh, you know, with long, prolonged sh- sujuds and so forth, maybe reading short surahs and so forth, that the Prophet used to do this, and this is Salat al-Duha. So this is also from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam. And this was a time that no one would enter upon him, alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning only the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have this, uh, would be close to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam during that time. Some of the benefits that the ulama mention is one of the benefits is that this hadith shows the, the firmness and the the efforts of Ibn Umar and the Sahaba in general for wanting to know ilm, to have knowledge and again, knowledge is ilm and nafiyah meaning knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah this is the best knowledge 
So that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, they wanted ilm and they wanted it for worship. They wanted to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to get to Jannah. And that is, that is what the, uh, that is the purpose of knowledge, ilm and nafia. As the Prophet وسلم, said in another hadith, Men salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi ilmin sahal Allahu lahu tariqan ila jannah. That whoever tra- tra- uh, traverses the path of knowledge, that Allah will make easy for him the path to jannah. So, as I've mentioned countless times, what did the Salaf used to say about Talib al Ilm? They said Talib al Ilm is Talib al Jannah. That the, the Talib al Ilm, the, the seeker of knowledge, is the seeker of paradise. Why? Because Ilm, knowledge, is going to help you come closer to Allah. And knowledge, it takes ikhlas, it takes sincerity. If you want real knowledge, you have to be sincere to Allah and do it in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order with the intention to worship Allah, remove the ignorance from yourself and remove the ignorance off others. This is, these are great uh, benefits of knowledge and they, they're the purpose of striving for, for uh, Islamic knowledge. And then it will be an act of ibadah and as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is one of the ways it will make uh, that it is uh, the way to Jannah. Man salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi alman sahalallahu lahu tariqan illa Jannah. That Allah will make easy for them the path to, to Jannah. Another benefit of this hadith, as Shaykh Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, and may Allah bless him with Jannah to Firdaus, ameen. He said, one of the benefits of this hadith is this hadith shows us the, uh, the recommendation, and that it's mustahab. These ru'atib that are mithkur, that these uh, sunan prayers that are mentioned in this hadith are, uh, it is recommended that we strive to, to do those. That this is something the Prophet ﷺ regularly did, and that's why Ibn Umar, it wasn't just one time that he did this, but it shows that this was a habit of the Messenger of Allah. ﷺ. And the Shaykh also mentioned. That with regards, or let, let's see, the Sheikh says that also uh, Salat al Asr, another benefit we gain from this hadith is that Salat al Asr, that there isn't a ratiba min hadihi mu'akkidat. So there is no mention of that being one of the uh, times, the definite times when the Prophet wasallam made those sunans. Meaning that you can do it and you'll be rewarded for it. But it is not the, what, what the Messenger of Allah did and encouraged us to do, necessarily. But that doesn't mean if you hear the Adhan and you, or, or what have you, and you want to pray, rakatain, pray the Rakatain, especially if you're in the Masjid. So you will receive Ajr for that. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. But it is not from the Mu'akkadat. It's not from those that are mentioned in the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as those ones that we should really strive to get. Like you should not, you should do your best to never miss, especially Fajr. Especially the Rakatain of Fajr. Don't miss that. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that the Ru'atib al-Maghrib wa Isha wa Fajr and Juma that they are the best they are the, the best if you do it in your house. So it's best to make those, uh, as we mentioned, those sunans in your home. Another benefit of this hadith is that also this hadith illustrates for us the uh, making a light uh, rock unit, rocketane unit of, uh, of prayer for Fajr. That the, the Fajr uh, sunans are very light, khafif. That, you know, they're done not quickly, not giving them their rights. That's not what we mean when they're khafif. Khafif meaning that they're not prolonged. Maybe you're not reading long surahs. And you're, you're, you're meeting the haq of the prayer with khushur. But at the same time, you're praying and uh, finishing the prayer without prolonging the sujood and the ruku' and, and the other aspects of the prayer. Another benefit of this hadith, the Shaykh mentioned, is that it's also mentioned in some of the sound hadith of the Prophet wasallam that dhuhr has sitta units. So this is also mentioned in other hadith, letting us know that also, and this is the, the guidance that I try to follow, to pray those as it's mentioned in other hadith, 
to pray six units for Dhuhr, four after the Adhan, when, when the time of Dhuhr comes in, and then of course the Dhuhr prayer, and after the Dhuhr prayer, Rakatain. So that is also from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, showing us the flexibility, showing us that there is there's, uh, flexibility and uh, in, in our ibadat, in those things mentioned in the Sunnah that, that give us that, that benefit. And from one of the hadith is the hadith of Um Habiba, Marfu, Arban, Arban Qabla Dhuhr or Rakatain Badaha, where the hadith of Um Habibata radiallahu ta'ala anha, where she said, which is attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where she mentioned, uh, Liana, because it's Marfu, it's not the actual statement, but it has the hukum Marfu, that this hadith, she said that uh, praying four before Dhuhr and two after Dhuhr. And this is what many of us are aware of and hopefully try to uh, make as a part of our, our, our life and our routine of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last benefit the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he said some of these ratib uh, are before the farida to prepare yourself, to prepare the person praying for ibadah. So those, those ones like the Rakatain of Fajr, this is preparing your heart, preparing your, your, yourself spiritually before you actually pray the wajib. So this is a, a, a benefit and possibly some of the hikmah or the illa for those prayers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best or some of the hikmah behind it. He, he also mentions and that um, some of them are after in that the, the ones that are after the, the sunnans that are after the, the wajib or obligatory prayers are there to make up for the shortcomings in your prayer, for the naqs. So possibly we were distracted by our cell phones, possibly we were distracted by some thing that will busy us in the dunya. I got to get back to work. Oh, I'm thinking about this. Oh, I wonder what my family's cooking. Oh, this and that. You know, whatever it is, all those things that we should leave, but sometimes they come to us, the shaitan whispers to us, and it busies us and it busies our hearts for our shortcomings, and it makes us also, causes us, it might affect the prayer in other ways, not just from the khushur, but also from making shortcomings in the sujood or, or in the sajda or, or, or the other aspects or the ruku, or maybe making it extra quick or, or losing track or forgetting. So these sunans afterwards, they help make up for the shortcomings in our salat. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.